Here we go. 840. Good evening. Tonight we are learning Maseches Psachim Daf Kuf Yud Aleph. We're starting about 12 lines or so from the bottom on Kuf Yud Amud Beis. We're in the middle of a discussion of Zugos, which was a concern um, when things are done in pairs or possibly in even numbers, that it can trigger a concern with uh, demons, with Shadim. And uh, we're going to continue some of that tonight. Uh, so the Gemara says, Amar Rav Chinina, Bereder of Yoshua, Ispargos, which is actually cabbage. It looks a lot like asparagus, uh, we would have thought. Uh, I don't know if I've ever shared with you my brother-in-law, Jeremy's uh, recipe for asparagus. Go to the store and buy asparagus, <laughs> throw it in the garbage and make a steak. That's his, that's, his, <laughs> that's his recipe for asparagus. So whenever I've seen this Gemara reference, it always reminds me of his uh, cooking habits. So uh, asparagus is not that. It's actually a drink <laughs> that has ca- cabbage in it. Uh, so this drink is a good drink. It's meat star flotova, Amy star flotova. It's only for good. You can't, if you have four drinks and one of them is asparagus, so then it doesn't ruin, it doesn't make it a, an even number and therefore it is not problematic. Amar Avina Mishmei Derava, what happens if you're unsure? So zuge, if you've done something and you're not sure if you have a zug, if you have a pair, so then l'chumra, we're strict and we do one more to make it odd, to make it an odd number. However, la some say the opposite, zuge l'kula, some say we should specifically not do that uh, because we don't we don't know which number you're on. You have no idea what number it is. So who's to say that adding one is better than not adding one? So there's two different shots in. What's that? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that's a. We we saw yesterday the guy who drank 16 cups of wine. So uh, this guy is a simpleton. This is nothing. Ten lines from the bottom. Amar Yosef. What happens if you have, if you have tray de chamra? You have two cups of wine dechad de shichra and one of beer. Does that make it an odd number? Two plus one should be, says the Gemara. No, lo mitzdarif. And trey de shechra, but if you have two of beer, and then the third one is wine, dechad de chamra, that is mitzdarif because the wine is more chashub. And the Gemara gives an example from another area of Simonaich. And the, how do you know that this is true? Just look in a halachic sugya about tuma vitara, which can be found in Maseches Kalim. A difficult Mishnah. We're going to learn it at its uh, face value. Zaklal, here's a rule with tuma. Kolam achubar lo min hacham or mimenu tamei. If you have something which is uh, a garment that's more strict than the other garments, it's more susceptible to tuma, then it will make it tame. Minakalmi menu tahor. So you can see that depending on which one is stronger, which one is the third drink, or which is the final garment that you add, that's going to change the status of tuma versus tara. And that we would say the same thing here, that because the, the wine is more powerful than the beer, so if your third cup is wine, then it is mitzdar if it takes it out of the zugos category and puts it into an odd number. Six lines from the bottom. Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav, Trey, Kama, Trey, Kama, Taka. If you have two uh, cups before Taka is a table, before the table, before the meal, if you have two drinks, uh, cups of wine before the meal, the Chad, Ataka, and one cup on the table at the meal, that's meets Darfe. The three of them, they do collect to be three. That's good. Then you don't have to worry about Zugos. Chad, Mekame, Taka. But if you only had one before the table was there, Betray, Ataka, and you had two at the table, Lo Mitzdarfin, and that's not Mitzdarfin. So says the Gemara, why, what's with the table? Who cares that there's a table there? Says the Gemara, Maske, Flora, Masharshia, Atu, Anan, Letakune, Taka, Kaba, Inan. You're worried about the table? We have a bigger problem. Letakune, Gavra, Ba, Inan. The Gavra, Kam, Miskan. He's got, he's the one with the problem. He drank three cups of wine. He's fine. He's fine. Why does the table change anything. So says the Gemara, you're right, a little bit of a misunderstanding. It's not to say that before the meal and during the meal, but let's say that you drink a couple of cups at the meal and then they remove the table and you drink a third cup. No, no, no. From, from the meal to after the meal, the table does make a difference. The removal of the table makes a difference. And that's only going from the meal to after the meal, as opposed to what we thought was the case from Rav Nachman, which was going from before the meal to the meal. That's why the table makes a difference, not, not going into the meal, but leaving the meal. This is similar to the story of Rabbi Bar Nachmeni, where they brought back a table for him to have another cup, so he wouldn't have ended up with an even number of cups. That's uh, quoted here in Rashi on the left side, uh, on the inside margin, uh, or the Rashba. It's all the Rashba. I don't know. I don't see a distinction. I'm not sure. But it's quoted here on the inner margin uh, in either the Rashbam or Rashi. The Gemara continues on the bottom line of Kuf Yud Amid Beis. Amar of Yehuda Marshmuel, Kol HaMazug, all drinks that are made in dilutions meet Starek. They all combine with one another to uh, to create Zugos. Chutz mina maim, except for water. Rav Yochanan Amar Afilu Maim. Even if you have a mixture of waters, uh, Rashi on the top of the page says, Mezugim 
uh, what does it mean to mix water? Do you take two kinds of water and mix them? Well, what is that even talking about? Says Rashi, we're talking about two different temperatures of water. Rashi says, Mizugin kigon kariri bechamimi, bechamimi bekariri, cold and hot and hot and cold. Demaya lo mizigahi. It's really not, a it's not really mixing. I mean, it is mixing, but that's what the Gemara says uh, that the Tanakama, sorry, it's not the Tanakama, it's the sheets of Rabbi Yudam Shmuel who says that water is excluded. And Rabbi Yochanan says, Afilu um, mayim. But Amara Papa Lo Amran, when do we say that water is included? Lo Amran Ella Chamimi Lego Karira. He says the only mixtures that actually are considered mixtures of water are when you have chamimi lego karira, hot water into cold, the karira lego chamimi. Or if you have cold going into hot water, aval, chamimi lego chamimi, if hot poured into hot water, the karira lego karira, or cold poured into cold water, no temperature differential, then lo amar, then we would not say that that's considered uh, the type of water that's muzzik that, that factors into the count. Let's why, shift gears. Why is everyone afraid of tears? I mean, I wasn't here yesterday. Yeah, the background is that there was apparently a concern in the Gemara, in the Brisa, in a, tose, in a Tosefter of Brisa, that when things are in pairs, it brings about um, it brings about uh, shadim. Uh, so that's what we're trying to avoid. That was yesterday's daf at full. Right. So there, there, the Gemara quotes a line that uh, Ashmedai was the king of Zugos. He was a shade. Was, Ashmedai was the, the Melech, was the king of Shadim and Zugos. So this was a concern. We don't know how it plays out right now. Yesterday we saw Shita's Lakanu Lakan. Does it apply nowadays? Does it apply in Eretz Yisrael, not in Babel? Uh, so uh, right. a longer discussion. I ain't Sham for yesterday's daf. Four lines down, Kufir Aleph, Amid Aleph. The Gemara here presents um, four things that you should not do. Amar Eish Lakish. Arbad Varm Haose Osan. There are four things that if you do them, Dama Barosho, your life is in your own hands. Mischaib Benafsho. And anyways, your Chayev Misa, your Chayev Benefesh. Eilu Hain, and here's what they are. Hanifne ben dekel lakosel, a person who goes to the bathroom uh, between a, a tree and a kosel and a wall. The over ben shnei dekalim, someone who walks between two palm trees. The ashosem mayim shuulin, someone drinks borrowed water. The over al pene, the over al mayim shvuchin, and they walk over water that was spilled on the ground. The afilu shvachto ishto befanav, even if his wife poured it, and we know where the water came from. Afal pikein, these four things are dangerous. Let's go through each of them. If a person goes to the bathroom between a palm tree and, and the wall, that's only true when the gap between the wall and the palm tree is less than Dalad Amos. But then there's no concern about Shadim under those circumstances. That's not considered dangerous if there's more than Dalad Amos. And if there are isn't four Amos, that's only true if there's no other path referencing the Shadim here that the Shadim have no other path to go. So let's say that the way that the street, the alley that you are in, there's a tree on one side and you can't go to, the, you can't, there's a brick wall behind the tree. And on the other side, there's just a wall. So in that case, if it's less than Dalad Amos, that's a big problem. But uh, if there's another path for the Shadim to go, less Lanba, that's not problematic. What about the trees? If there's a Rishus HaRabim between the two trees, so then you don't have to worry about it. That's totally fine. But if, it, if not, if it's just regular trees, you should not walk between two of these particular palm trees. What does that mean? The Rishus HaRabim? It means that if there's a tree over here and there's a tree over here and there's a public pathway, a big road in the middle of the two trees, that's not what, there's no shade in there. The shade don't congregate in public places as we'll see in a little bit. So, so if between the, the two trees, where they do, where they do what? So they you're, you're do, just in a forest and there's two trees right next to each other. You should not walk between them because they're shaded. That's all trees. And that's right. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That we, we, we as a culture seem to not care that much about Shadim other than the stories that we've heard you have to drill holes and I called and asked to Shiloh when we were building our house that we added to the back of our house and when we added to the back of our house we closed up a window on that wall and then added 15 16 feet to the back of our house so I called and asked to Shiloh to a rub and uh, Rav said, don't worry, because you're going to have a new window on that back wall. I said, yeah, well, plenty of windows on the back wall. He says, totally fine. Yeah, this I was know. a Litvish, I, I asked her by first. It was a Litvish apostic. It's not, uh, so we have degrees. If you knock a house down and build a new one, then you have to put your windows in the same location. As I haven't even heard that. House. Yeah, I haven't heard that. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Our, our first floor is like that. And then we better, uh, whatever, we close the garage and put a wall up. And the first thing that someone says, you drill a hole. Yeah. Okay. So there are a number of people in the community who have stories about this, where everything yeah. started going wrong and they drilled holes and but everything. But legit, go back. if we're walking in a forest, we should avoid walking between trees. I have to ask Rashad. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to discuss this in a, in a little bit more detail later today as we go through the Gemara. We'll see a little bit more color to this uh, sugya, but um, it, yeah, it's a good question. It's a good question. We'll see that uh, 
that Shadim love uh, love shade actually. Not, it's both two different hence languages. Uh, uh, I don't know what. Hence the word shade, not hence oh. the word shadim. <laughs> yeah, the, the Hebrew came before the English. Okay, so let's continue. Um, where are we? About ten lines down. Hashose ma'im sheulim. Five lines down in the wide lines. Someone who drinks borrowed water lo amran ela de shailin who cut a katan. If a child was the one who was the one drinking it, that's when it's a problem. Aval gadol less above. If you're an older person, if you're a gadol thirteen and up. Or a, a, for a woman, twelve and up. Uh, actually, we said that by women, there's not no concern of shade. And we saw this yesterday. Fine, whatever it is, uh, that there's no concern here as well. And even if a child is the one who borrowed it, lo amran ela besade de lo shchichi about aval biir de shchichi leslan. But that's only true. The concern was in the sade out in uh, out in in the fields where there's no uh, no one's around. That's where there's more shade over there. Uh, that's where there are fewer, uh, um, where there's not a lot of people there. But in the city where there's a lot of people, you don't have to worry about it. Even in the Sada, where the Katam was the one who drank the, the water, he borrowed water. It's only true about water. I don't know, why is a child drinking beer and wine? You got to get some rules and regulations here. So, what about the fourth case? Over Let's say a person is, just walks over a puddle of water. What happens? Singing in the rain. Why? You're not allowed to walk over a puddle, says the Gemara. Lo amran ela delo af delo af sekinhu beafra. If it doesn't spread out over the ground, velo tof behu roka. And lo amran ela delo af sekinhu. Right. We say that if it doesn't spread out, and velo tof behu roka. And if if uh, spit were were not to float in it, abal af sekinhu. If it did spread out, oh tof behu roka. Or if there was something floating in it, like saliva. So then less than by no concern at all. Velo velo amran ela delo avad alaihu shimsha. It only applies when the sun. Has yet to see directly this puddle, this uh, this spill. The law of Alayu Shisin Nigre, and that 60 people haven't run over it. Aval Avar Alayu Shimsha, Avar Alayu Shisin Nigre. If there if there was sun that hit this puddle, or there were 60 people who ran over it, less Lanba. And still another caveat. The law Amran Ella, the law Rachiv Hamra, the Sai Misani. That's only true if you don't ride on an animal and you're not wearing shoes. Unbelievable. Who knew? The nuance is like, it sounds like from a halachic lens, it sounds like we were, we're talking. When do we say X only in the scenario of one, two, and three, but not four or five? And we're like treating it the same way. We're giving it the same credence. The Gemara gives a lot of real estate. This is our second blot in a row. Full, these are big blot. Second blot in a row to discuss these things. So we, we do have to, I, I don't know, I don't want to say take them seriously. We have, we have to take them into consideration. As we saw yesterday, that you should be somewhat concerned. There were Amorim, as we will see today, who were concerned about this. Aval, Rachiv Chamra Vesayim Misane. Let's say a person was riding on an animal and they were wearing shoes. Less lanba, then there's no concern at all. The Hani Mili says the Gemara hecha deleka lemechash lekshafim. That's only in a place where there's no sorcery, because all we've been talking about so far was uh, I shouldn't say all we're talking about, but what we've been talking about so far is shadim. What about kishuf? What about sorcery? What about witchcraft? Aval hecha deleka lemechash lekshafim. Avagav dika kohani chashinon. Even with all of the caveats and exclusions that we just said above, it doesn't apply by kishuf. If you're in a place where there's kishuf, you should avoid the puddles altogether. Good. Um, how do we know uh, that Kishuf is dangerous even with all the caveats? Because there was a man who was riding an animal, he was wearing shoes, the gamud misane, the tzave kare. His shoes shriveled up and uh, and his feet uh, also shriveled up, and uh, it was bad. It was bad. So that was because of Kishuf. But had it been that what we were talking about wasn't Kishuf, but rather it was uh, Shadim, then it would have been Mutter and he wouldn't have been damaged. Good. Almost halfway down, approximately halfway down, Kuf Yud Aleph Amud Aleph. Tanu Rabbanan Shlosha Ein Mematzin Velo Mis Matzin. You should not go in between them, and they should not go in between you. Ve'eluhein Hakelav Ve'hadekel Ve'haisha. A dog, a dekel is a palm tree. Ve'haisha, speaking about women. Ve'yeshomer Ma'afeh Chazir, even speaking about a pig. Ve'yeshomer Ma'afeh Nachash, snakes as well. Now, all of this is on a level that is not uh, the rational level. There's nothing inherent about any of these categories uh, other than some of them are physically dangerous, like snakes. It's just a bad idea. Uh, but there's like a, a different layer going on here. This is not a logical layer per se. It's a halachic lens, a Torah lens. It's probably the best way to say it. Now, but even Masin, what happens if they if, it, if this does happen? You end up in between them and they in between you, might Kante. So, Amar Papa, Niftach Bekel, Venafsik Bekel, you should start a Pasuk that starts with an Aleph, uh, with, with the, the name of Hashem of Aleph Lamed. And then you should, and that should have the, the same ending of the Pasuk of Aleph and then Lamed. So, if you look in the Meforshim, it, it says here that the Pasuk is Kel Motz Yami Mitzrayim. And then it ends with the Pasuk of Ma Po Al Kel. So, that's what you should do. Inami says the Gemara, another answer that if you get stuck in these scenarios where either these 
things are in between two men or a uh, or a man is in between any of these two things and niftach below v'nafsik below you should find a pasuk that starts with the word lo and a pasuk that ends with the word lo and the mafarshim say that the pasuk is lo ish kel kel v'yichazei ben adam and the pasuk ends velo uh, yikimena um, uh, that doesn't make sense yeah it just says velo yikimena that the word below as part of the phrase is considered to be the word lo hani betray there were two people. And there was a woman who walked, a woman who was a nida, who walked in between two men. If she was at the beginning of her nida status, of her menstrual state, uh, he, then then one of them will die. Uh, then, then if she's at the end of her nida cycle, then there will just be a battle between them. So some of them, unfortunately, I think the Balaitosos write this. Yeah, if you look at the bottom Tosfos, Tosfos says, "The Bramaslan and Tchilas Nida he Horeges Yesh Mefarshim Osel Hen Kishu." It's not Stam if she's a Nida. <laughs> Otherwise, what does that mean? No, it's not every woman who's a Nida. It's a woman who is a Nida who did who was a Valas Kishu and she did some type of witchcraft. So that's what we're talking about these damages. Either way, my Takante, what should they do if this happens? Niftach Bekel Vanafsik Bekel. They should make sure that uh, they say a pasuk that begins with Aleph Lamed and ends with Aleph Lamed. Hani tre nashe. There's two women, the Yaswan Biparasha Strachim, that are sitting at a crossroads. Chada Bahai Gisa de Shvila, one sitting on one side of the road, Bahada Bidah Gisa, and one is sitting on the other side of the road. Umechavnan Apaihu Lehadade. So um, let's say that uh, you got someone sitting on this side of the road and she's facing this way, and another woman facing on this side of the road and, and is facing this way, and they're sitting across the road from one another and looking directly at each other. So says the Gemara, you need to be very, very careful about that, says the Gemara. Vadai bikshafim askina. They're for sure doing kishuv. For sure. Okay. My um, takante, what should you do? You got to cross the road. There, it's the only road to get to where you need to go. And there's uh, these women are involved in kishuv. Again, one sitting on each side of the road facing each other. So when I say obviously, I don't mean like it's obvious to me, but the Gemara seems to say that it's obvious, Pashat Vada, that they're being involved in kishuv, that they're being involved in witchcraft and sorcery. My takante, what should you do? Simple solution. If there's another way to go, all right, so take the circuitous route so you can avoid this. If there isn't another way to go, so what should you do? Says the Gemara. If there's another man that's there, Bahade, with you, who take his hands, Bahade Hadai, who hold hands with him, literally, walk through holding hands. This will prevent the impact of Kishuf. And if not, if there is no one else to help you uh, walk through and you still have to go through, so you're still allowed to, but what you should do is say an incantation. Name a here's what you should say. Igras, Aslas, Asya, Belusia. These are all names of, uh, of uh, negative, uh, negative ruchos. Miskitala, you're going to be killed. You're going to be killed with a bow, uh, with a bow or with an arrow. So that is what you should do if you uh, uh, ever see okay. such a scenario. Vaita. Yeah, that's what the Gemara says. If a man happens to see a, a woman, where she is exiting a river from going to the mikvah, if he uh, then is involved in Tash Meshamita uh, before she is, then he will be overtaken by Ruach Zenunim. He'll be taken over by this uh, negative, uh, negative spiritual thing about Znus. But if she is the first one to have Tash Meshamita, then then she'll be the one who has this negative spirit attached to them. What should she do? It's an incantation, but it's also a Pasuk. That's the Pasuk to read if ever one is stuck in that scenario. What was that? Oh, oh sorry. Okay. okay. Amar of Yitzchak, I didn't see, sorry. My dechsiv, what does the Pasuk mean? Famous Pasuk, What does this Pasuk mean? That we will um, be begates al maves, the in the valley of the shadow of death where nothing bad will happen. That's someone who sleeps in the shade of a single dekel tree. And, uh, and sleeping in the shadow of a moon. In regards to that tree, Lo Amran, when do we say that? We only say it, Ella, to Lo Nafil Tula de Chavre Ilave, only when another tree's shadow doesn't fall on it. So you're sleeping in the shadow of one tree. If the, sh the shade is falling from another tree and touches your tree, no problem at all. 
If that's true, let's understand the following. Brisa, four lines from the bottom. Kuf Yud Aleph, Amud Aleph. Elohad Detanya Hayashin Betzel Dekel Yechidi Bechatzer. This is different. We didn't say Bechatzer before. We said about the tree, about the shade of the singular tree, but we didn't say about the Chatzer. Says the Gemara. That's uh, in the Brisa. That's part one. We have to analyze that word Bechatzer. And as well, Hayashin Betzel Levana Dama Barosha. Hey Chidami, what's that? What's going on there? Ilema. If you want to say Delo Nafal Tul Dechari Lavei. If you want to say that that Bryce is talking about a case where the second tree's shade doesn't fall on the first tree shade, tree's shade, then Afilu Basada, no matter what, that should be the case. Afilu uh, Basada Nami, it should even be the case that it, it should be Motor. Ella, Lav, Shmami, no, it must be that the Chatzer, in the Chatzer, the rules are different. Out there in the Sada, it just depends on the shadow of the other tree. But in the Chatzer, Afal Gav, the Nafil, Tula, the Chari, Lave, it's still going to be problematic, even if you sleep in the shade, but it's a Chatzer. So in a Chatzer, there's more people around. So uh, we're concerned uh, of, of something more damaging happen here, happening here with Shadim. Shema mina, that that must be what's going on. What about the, being in the uh, shadow of the moon? It depends where the moon is in the sky. That's true when the moon is in the western part of the sky. If it's on the eastern side of the sky, the moon, then its shade is not considered problematic. The Shadim don't hide in that space. Says the Gemara. Haiman de Mefane Agirda de Dikla, a person who goes to the bathroom near a uh, the a tree stump. So it says the Gemara Achta Lei Lidide Ruach Palga. So then he will be overtaken by a ruach which which is referred to as palga. That's the name of the of the spirit. The Haiman de Masle Reshe Agirda. If someone puts their head on a tree stump to Dikla on that type of tree and a palm tree, Achta Lei Ruach Tzirada. Then he will then be taken over by this ruach, which is referred to as Tzirada. Haiman de Pase Dikla. Someone who jumps over a palm tree. Imiktal, if the tree was cut down, katil, then this person will be killed. Iaker, if the tree wasn't uh, cut down, it was uprooted, then may aker umais, and he too will be uprooted and he will die. But hanimili, this last case of jumping over a tree is the lomanach karei lave. That's if you don't uh, step on the palm tree itself. But if you do, avalmanach karei ilave less lanba. But if you do step on the wood and don't jump over it entirely, so then uh, less lanba, then there's no concern at all. Chamishe tu lehave, there are five types of shade where we need to be concerned about shadim, about, um, about evil spirits. Tula de dikla yechida, we already spoke about this one, a, a, a lone palm tree. Tula de chanda, this is translated by the article as a lot tree, L-O-T-E, I don't know what kind of tree that is. Um, tula de se'inasa, a fig tree. Tula de fircha, a, uh, the shade of what's a caper bush. This is a, something we're at least somewhat familiar with. Tula de zardata, uh, the shade of a tree called a sorb tree. This is places where they live. Ika de amre, some say aftula de arba, the, sh- the shade of a boat. Vitula de, ar- de aravta, the shade of a willow tree. And klala de milsa in general. Called an afish anfe kashe, kashe tule. Wherever there are a lot of branches to a particular tree, you should be concerned about spirits. And any wood that is harmful wood, if it's dangerous wood, then uh, then its shade is going to be uh, problematic. You should be worried about that. Levar mikiromasha, except for a tree that is referred to as a service tree, afalgav de kashe silve, that even though the wood is dangerous, lo kashe tule, that is not a place where shadim hang out. How do we know? Because we've heard shadim talk before. De amra la shade livra. There was a, uh, a demon, a shade, a female shade that said to her son, You need to run away from this tree, from the service tree. Get away from it. Why? That's how your father was killed. Who's that? Who's that? Okay, so his father was killed by, the, by a service tree. And she was concerned, and it will kill him as well. Who's him? So the Mephoshim explains a metaphor. She's, what she's saying is that she doesn't want her son to die, but she didn't want to say, this female shade, she didn't want to say that her son was going to die. So she said him, but it was really referring to the son. Ravashi, Ravashi says, This is an Amora, a late Amora. Uh, no, sorry, Rav Kahana wasn't so late. I think he was third century. No, he had to be late because it was Ravashi. I think there's more than one, one, more than one Rav Kahana anyways. But this is a later version either way because Ravashi was very late. So by the end of the Amoraim, we're talking around 400, 500 of the common era. People were makbid on, uh, on, on avoiding shadim. They would not go in the shadow of trees. They wouldn't go in the shadow of any trees to try to avoid them. Be Pirche, the the uh, those which inhabit the caper bush, they're referred to as Ruche. That's the name of the Ruach. That's the name of these uh, Shadim. The Vezardata, the ones that are by the sorb trees, are referred to as Sheda. Uh, those are that's their name. The Be Igre Rishpe, 
The ones that uh, hang out on, on the tops of roofs uh, are referred to as Rishbe. Ask the Gemara, who cares? Lemai nafkamina, why do we need to know the names? Answers the Gemara with a practical solution. Le kimia, to make an amulet. An amulet is one of the ways that we would protect. Remember we discussed in Masech Shabbos, can you wear an amulet on Shabbos? Okay, all the different, uh, all the different halachos that we learned then. So that is the nafkamina is in regards to a kima. So says the Gemara, Debe Pirche, the first one that we spoke about, the, the shaden that live by a caper bush, they're birya shein lehem nine. They don't have any eyes. They can't see anything. So this is very helpful. It says the Gemara, the Mayanaf Kamina, why do we care? Legazuze la. So you can run away from it. If you're by a caper bush and you hear a shade talk, just turn around and bolt because they can't chase you. And the Gemara tells a story now that indicates that they were really not very good at running. We have capers in our refrigerator at this last night. I don't know what to use them for anyway. Well, you, you don't have to worry about the vegetation. You have to worry about it, the shadows of and near the bush itself. The no, they, yeah. they keep your fridge, keep the shade and color of your fridge. Make sure everything stays fresh. Yeah. You should keep your light on even when it's... Yeah. So says the Gemara, a story about this type of shade, about the um, about the, the, the Bey Pirche, the, these animals who live by a caper bush, animals, a shade in. There was a particular um, young Talmud Chacham who was going to go to the was going to go to the washroom near one of these caper bushes. Shama de ka'asa ilave the gazile. He uh, heard, I don't know how this works, but he heard a shade that was coming in his direction. And then he, he got up and took off. He ran away. Ki azla chab ke when the, when the, uh, when the demon started to try and run away, he bumped into a, he bumped into a tree. So he, he grabbed a hold of the tree. He was mechabek. He held the tree. Tzabach dikla upakahi. The palm tree dried out immediately and the demon, the shade exploded. We said that uh, the um, shaden by a sorb tree are referred to as shade. That's only true when it's near a city because the ones that are near the city is low. They have 60 shaden that live, not no less than 60 shaden that live there. How, what is the difference of how many shaden live there? Just don't hang out there. No, the answer is what happens if you get infected, if they uh, invade your body. So then, we want to make sure that you want to, that you know what you're doing, that you know what you're getting into, that you can write a kamiya so you can get out of it. So it's important to know that the uh, the zaradita, this particular tree, the sorb tree has a lot of shaden there. Um, and the Gemara tells a, uh, tells a story about this. Ahu bar kasha de masa, there was an officer of a city. De azil he was walking around gabe zaradita next to a sorb tree. De havasamich lamasa, it was near, near the city. Alu be shit in shedev istakan. All 60, at least 60, entered his body. All 60 shedev entered his body. And he was put into a dangerous scenario. There was a rabbi who said, oh, let me, let me help you. I'm going to write you a kami. I'm going to write you an amulet. But he didn't know that there were at least 60 shedim that were inside this tree. So all he did was wrote one kami that would remove one of the shedim, but insufficient. The person was still sick. So and he heard, um, this person uh, heard, that there were all of a sudden there were there was music playing chinga according to some of Forsham, is some type of instrument and it was playing inside the tree which meant that there were so many more demons as well again uh, I, I, is this a homily I'm not sure the kamashu hachi and they started singing a song and they sang a song that said sudre demar kitzurva merabanan this part, this guy who's wearing a suit they used to wear these turban types of things that wrap around their heads and what they used to do um, is when we would say the bracha birchos hashachar is um, Oteri Israel Basifar, uh, not that one. What's the, uh, the previous one? Oteri Israel Bivura, Oteri Israel Basifar. I think. Uh, what? Oteri Israel Basifar. Yeah, I thought that was Tefillin. Anyways, that bracha that they were making, they would normally make it when they put the hat on their head. That, that's when. That's how some Svartim do that still today. So the Gemara says it must be that this is an, a young one because Bedikna be Bimar Delo Yada Baruch. He didn't even know to say Baruch when he put on his sudar in the morning. He's not a Tamar Chacham. So he didn't say that bracha. So then asa umei rabbanan the yada the zrad tashit in shei dehava. Then they found a, a rav who knew what he was talking about, and he knew that there were sixty, um, sixty shedim in a zrad so in a sorb tree. And then kasev lakmiya the shit in shei de, and he wrote one for sixty. And then shama. Then he heard the rav who who uh, wrote the kmiya for sixty. He heard to kaam rupanu manaychu mehacha. Everyone get out of here. Everyone gets time to get out of this person. This kmiya is going to destroy us. We need to get out of here. The following phrase, the Gemara analyzes Ketev Meriri. Ketev Meriri is a, um, is a well-known uh, phrase, and we should analyze it. it says the Gemara, Trei Kitvei Havu. There are two types of Ketev Meriri. Chad One uh, that uh, governed the day before noon. Vechad Mibasar Tiara, one afterwards. 
The one that was the Mekame Tara was referred to as Ketev Meriri Shemo. His name was Ketev Meriri. Umichse, what does he look like? Umichse Bekada de Chamcha. It's like he was um, inside a container that had uh, Kamcha, which is Kutach, that uh, the milk type of dip that people used to use. The Hadar Bey Baksha, and then you're stirring it. That's what it looks like. And that motion of stirring, that's what the... Uh, that's what this thing looked like. Machlokas here is exactly how to understand this, but um, we'll leave that for now. The buser tier on the animal, the, the shade for in the afternoon is called Ketev Yashut Tzaharayim. And this one is a Mechzebe. What does he look like? Karna de Iza. If one were to look at the horns of, a, of an A's, of a goat, a Hadar Bey Kenafaya. And it looked like there was some type of swirling that was taking place. That's what this animal looks like. Maybe when you see a swarm of all of those bugs that always travel in a pack, is that a shade? I have no idea. Says the Gemara, Abai have a shakil va'azil. Abai was traveling. The um, the azil Rapapa miyamine. Rapapa was on his right side. But Rabhuna bereid Rav Yosho mismole. And Rabhuna bereid Rav Yosho was on his left side. And then Chazi alu ketem riri. Rabhuna, so, uh, sorry, Abai saw the ketem riri. The kasi lape the smole. And he was coming on the left side toward um, who was on his left side. On his left side was. Um, was Rabbi Yeshua. Yeah, thank you. So he's not coming on the left side. So he switched the kids. Ahadra the Rav Papa the Smoli, the Ravuna Bereid Rav Yeshua the Amina. He switched them. So uh, I don't think Rav Papa really liked that. Amar the Rav Papa, who was on the right side, who just got put on the left side, right near the Ketev Mariri. Amar the Rav Papa, excuse me. Ana Maishna de Ashli. Why exactly are you not concerned about me and the Ketev Mariri? So Abaye says, you've got good mazel. Omar le Abai says to him, At Shaita Kayemeslach. This is a great time for you. And because this is a great time for you, you don't have to worry about Ketev Mariri. So uh, we're going to do a little bit more and then we'll stop. Just one more small section. Mechad um, Ad Shis Sarbe from the first of the month of Tammuz until the 16th of the month of, month of Tammuz, the Ketev uh, Shedim are prominent, and you should be careful about, uh, about them up until the 16th. We're not sure how much they're around afterwards. Where are they found during the month of Tammuz? They're found in, the, in, uh, in grass. Uh, it's called Chatsuva, it's a type of grass. In the shadows of the grass, that don't have a shadow of one ama. They're not that tall. Ubatuli de Tafra Upanya, and when the sun is very low in the morning or very far in the Panya in the evening, de Lohave Garmida, where the shadow is also not an Amalam, but the Iker Betule de Besakise. But the Ketev Meriri and the Ketev Yashutsa Rain, their primary location is in the shadows of bathrooms. That is a primary place where they're found. We're going to stop right here at Amar of Yosef. Mir Sashem will pick up Motse Shabbos at 8 40 p.m. Wishing you all a beautiful night and a beautiful Shabbos. This is all very